Welcome to the Success Story Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Clary. On this podcast, I have candid interviews with execs, celebrities, politicians, and other notable figures, all who have achieved success through both wins and losses, to learn more about their life, their ideas, and their insights. I sit down with leaders and mentors and unpack their story to help pass those lessons on to others through both experiences and tactical strategy for business professionals, entrepreneurs, and everyone in between. Without further ado, another episode of the Success Story Podcast. Thank you for joining me. I am sitting down with Bobby Castro. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, if you haven't seen him on social media, his background is extremely impressive. So Bobby has a ninth grade education, but with that ninth grade education and $25,000, he founded Bankers Healthcare Group in 2001. So he built Bankers Healthcare Group from uh, an evaluation of well, an initial investment of twenty five thousand to an evaluation of two hundred fifty million, and then upwards of a billion. Um, not only just as he built an incredible business, uh, he's a recipient of the Ernst and Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award in twenty twelve. Uh, he led BHG um, to be included on Inc. Uh, five hundred and five thousand list thirteen times. He's been recognized by Fortune, Forbes, Entrepreneur. Hispanic 500, Cranes, and more. He was a keynote at Grant Cardone's 10X conference, uh, has been featured numerous times in the Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, Smart Business Magazine, CNBC, amongst others. So he, and not only, it's not just the business success, um, some of the, some of the main things that are sort of core to what he's done over his career are obviously the business success, but uh, some charitable organizations, Operation Smile, Food for the Poor, American Cancer Society, uh, house calls for the homeless. So it's really, you know, it's a 360 of, of business success, personal success, and then leveraging both of those to obviously give back and, and, and enable others. Um, I've, I've consumed some of the content. I love the, the PMA, the positive mental attitude, like all this stuff, like the, the whole mantra is great. Um, but really, thank you for joining me. And, and let's, you know, hear your story. You know, that, 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 that's so awesome. Thank you for that those kind words. And, um, you know, I, I, this is no exaggeration at all. And I know it, it, it may sound like that or appear like that for most. And I get it because I, I used to be like, not most, but like some others. And, um, you know, when you see me with all these shirts and all this, this is, this is, it has changed my life. It, it, it's in my soul. It's in my spirit. When you say all those credentials and all those things, it's, it's incredible. You know, before I w- was blessed to have been awarded that Ernst & Young in 2012, I had no idea who Ernest & Young was. I thought it was an individual. I didn't know it was an accountant from one of the best in the world. Had zero clue. Had zero clue of a lot of things. And that is so powerful, and I'm so blessed that I did because that's how much – I was focused. That's how much I am extremely focused about my non-refundable minutes. I'm extremely positive to everyone I encounter because I want to give more value than I receive because I know if you do that, you can maximize more in your minute, in your 24 hours and get three days out of one day. And it's incredible, you know, when, when now I'm on social media, just pouring out my heart, no, no motives, no intentions. I don't do this for a living. Um, just purely just to help others. I'm, I'm fascinated to see why I was able to maybe scale without raising money or begging people to invest in me and spending all that energy because I was so focused on truly being focused. Just think about what I just said. I was so focused, Scott, being extremely focused. And you get so much out of it and you're, you're, you force yourself to be extremely positive you manifest these outcomes because you're putting so much energy in every non-refundable minute being productive and efficient. And it blows my mind when, I, when people read stats like that, I'm saying, wow, that, that sounds like a pretty cool guy that accomplished a lot. And, and it's, yeah. it's like, <laughs> okay, because I was just, just so driven. And, um, you know, a lot of people think entrepreneurs, man, you got to be tough. You got to be rough. You have to have that personality because that's what you see on TV. That's what you see on social media. As for me, no exaggeration, I did it all with kindness, man. It's the most powerful tool. You never get a, you never get a no. You always win at the negotiation tables. You always 
customers want to do business with you. Customers are willing to pay you a premium for your services. Um, and I know this. I, I grew with it. I, I, I failed in the third grade. Um, only got through the ninth grade. Um, and I was always curious. I always had a lot of questions because I, I have a hard time even today comprehending things because I, I tend to move very fast. Um, I was an introvert uh, all the way to seven years old. I really didn't speak. Um, I come from a big family. My mom, my mom had me when she was 27. My dad was 50. Um, I was born in the Bronx in New York. He was a mailman, totally broke, beautiful person, um, just, a, just a, a Puerto Rican lover, man. The ladies loved him. My mother, uh, she's Jewish and Irish. My dad passed when he was 94, and he had 11 kids before he, he met my mom. So there's, there's a big family, and I call it a lot of passion, a lot of personalities, which comes with chaos, comes with drama. I've seen it all. We grew up on Renaissance Center where my mom had to work her tail off three full-time jobs being a waitress in hospitality for, for our bed, for our nightstand, for our coffee table. I used to see them pick it up, re-deliver it, lights out, electricity out every other month. It bothered the heck out of me. Um, and I think I picked up my people skills because my mother, being a waitress, she had to give you tremendous value if she was waiting on you and your friends and your family with the hopes and pray that you're going to tip her 18%. She had to smile when she didn't want to smile. She had to say thank you when she didn't want to thank you. She had to go to work and, and put on this show. And then it became a habit. And seeing that, it created a habit within me without me knowing, but what I did get, at least what I get from my mom, she tells me now, she's 80 years old, Bobby, you took it to a whole new level. You actually felt it. I had to pretend it. And I don't know how that happened other than just crediting my mom for that. She kept pushing me, pushing me, pushing me. We grew up on government assistance. Um, we have the same struggle a lot of families have. We all have the stories. Anyone that is successful, they all have a story and everyone's Bobby, tell me about your story. I don't think the magic is in the story. The magic is how I did it. Everyone's so fascinated about an entrepreneur's story. Entrepreneurs are on drugs. They have welfare. We all have stories. The story is irrelevant. It's how did we get from zero to many zeros, but more so, how do we feel so good? Dr. Feel Good stuff. And I just learned one important thing, that's how I was able to exit for a billion dollar valuation. And I learned through the process. No one taught me. This is not very hard. If you stay focused, the power of Google.com, <laughs> it's so much free, free resources. It blows my mind how people want to give others money, which nothing's wrong with that. There's always a strategy when you get to a certain level. But before that level, you're in full control of all the strategies and it's for free on Google. And that's where Bobby got it. Before Google, I had it work a little harder. Now the, the resources are unbelievable on the internet. But I just want to ask, I want to ask you something. I just want to, I want to, I want to, so this is all, this is all very good. I just want to, I want to tee up your origin story before we go into the life lessons because there's yep. a ton of stuff that you pulled out of this and you're, and you're, and you, and you dipped into the, the origin story a little bit, but I want to, I want to just understand where your head was at. So you took these life lessons from a relatively average upbringing. You're, you're, you know, nothing incredible. You weren't handed, you know, a silver spoon or whatnot, like nothing like that. Yet you your parents worked very hard. You saw that. And, and that was something that you sort of internalized as something that you just had to do with like curiosity, the passion, the drive, the grit. So, you know, you, you okay. So you, you had a tough upbringing, tough relatively compared compared to somebody who was just given things and given advantage, given opportunity. Now you, you ninth grade was the farthest you went in terms of your formal education. What do you think led you to be able to just take what you knew at the point in your life when you were ninth grade? What is that? I don't even know how old you are in ninth grade. Not 14 not years old. old. 14, Fourteen years old. Years old. So you're fifteen years old. You just you've seen your parents work really really hard. And you have a ninth grade education, you have say 25 grand or, or you have some money. I don't know if it was at 19 when you had 25 or 14 when you had 25 grand, but you probably had some money from working somewhere. So how did you start? How did you start like just putting yourself out there? How did you build up your business from the ground up? And what were, and how did you learn all this stuff? Because you, you yeah. know it now and all this stuff is, is very, very powerful. And I want to speak about manifesting. I want to speak about uh, you mentioned one thing. I, I heard a, a knowledge bite about um, non-refundable minutes, like all these different things. I love it. I love all this stuff. But how did you get to this point? 
And then let's go yeah. into let's go into that. Is that okay? Of course, dude. Of course, be more than happy to. Um, I got my first job at 14 years old at Pasquale's on 57th Avenue in Hialeah. My mother was a waitress there. When I wanted to leave school. My mom got me a job, more or less, at Pasquale's. You were not allowed to hire someone unless they were 16 years old and there were some part-time rules. Pasquale's did us all a favor. It's still, at 53 years old, it's still my wow-wow moment. Um, and we went to pay less, got my sneakers, Kmart, got my black slacks, I'll never forget, my black belt, my pinned down white shirt. It, I became a takeout order kid at this Italian restaurant. I, I, I became, I, it, it was, actually the biggest joy of my entire life. It was a, it, it started getting me to really expose myself to how fortunate people can order takeout, come to the restaurant. I worked my way up, I became a waiter, um, major failures. And I started becoming very curious like I was as a kid when I used to raise my hand, teachers used to get frustrated. Waiting on people like my mom, you start wondering why am I the waiter? And I'm not the individual sitting down. I didn't have any bad remorse for that. I was just curious because I was so fascinated with the conversations, especially when he became business. Because I used to be, when I, I seen anybody that appeared to be doing good in life, I was attracted to it. I was very vulnerable to it. And I was just, just started manifesting this situation without understanding. I did that journey for a number of years. And that business I sold for a billion dollar valuation, that's 20 years ago. So prior to 20 years, this has been a long battle Bobby Castro has been enduring. And then I finally got it when I started surrendering to the fact that I was constantly making the same mistakes, trying to fast track my success and skipping this very important process. And becoming a waiter, starting a business, I, I mortgaged, my mom bought her first home. Finally, she was renting a townhouse. There were beautiful couple. They said, Hey, Casey, let us do owner financing for you. And then finally she got a permanent mortgage. Well, Bobby Castro picked up the flyer. He called a guy, I never forget his name because it's a pretty cool name, Woody in Miami Lakes, Florida. He was a, back then it's a second mortgage today. It's called a HELOC. I mortgaged my mom and dad's house. My mother, just like when I wanted to leave at ninth grade back then it was junior high, not high school. And she supported it. When I said, mom, I want to do a second mortgage. And I, and I'll never forget. I took the bus to go to Miami Lakes to speak to this mortgage broker. Such a cool dude. He entertained this young kid, convinced me how it worked. I went back to mom and dad, convinced them. My mom took two minutes. She said, absolutely. We borrowed money. I opened my first business. My first official business was a cleaning service. I was going to go around office buildings because again, being in the hospitality, I knew I, I knew the importance of serving, serving, and you're just, so I wanted to clean. I struck out because you need a certain insurance requirements. I finally was on 36th Street, Northwest 36th Street, Miami Highlight, right next to Miami Highlight is an establishment called Pink Pussycat. And as you can imagine with the name, it's an adult establishment. I was at that time knocking on any door that had a door. I walked in, they gave me the job. It took maybe five minutes for them to say yes hassle-free type of clientele. I started cleaning this establishment after hours. And that's like, you know, seven in the morning. Then I started getting other similar gigs, adult entertainments, uh, after hours and all that. That ended maybe that's about a year later. That's tough work. That's very yeah. tough work. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it ended when a, 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 an adult entertainer said, how old is this kid? Just by not meaning any harm, well, that ended it, and they said, we can't have this kid there. Uh, we're just dealing with a liability. I gave up on it. I sold everything instead of racing out and doing the correct thing, knowing that, okay, this is, this is scalable. I can do this. So I sold everything for pennies on the dollar. I went back to being a hospitality waiter, getting classifieds. Back then, there was no internet. I was an addicted, an addicted junkie for the classifieds. Anything that said become a millionaire in 30 days, become a millionaire overnight, make money in nine minutes. Whatever it said, I mailed away from it. Every other day, um, there's some construction workers coming through. Um, no, it's all good, don't worry day, about it. <laughs> every other day, packages were being mailed to my house, my parents' house, with all these business opportunities. And I was just swimming in this stuff, manifesting all this stuff, 
never taken action on any of it. The ones I took action on it, I found reasons to give up. Fast forward, many forwards. I am, I, I'm, I'm a waiter at Rusty Pelican in Key Biscayne here in Miami and doing sales for the Better Business Bureau during the day. Before that, I took that job again. I went back to hospitality. There was one moment in my life which really started to change in a very good way. He's totally fine. You can walk, dude. You, my dog here with the construction workers. Um, I lived at my in-law's house, Pedro and Dixie, beautiful people that helped me and my wife. And me and my wife would be married 30 years since October 6th. Sophie was driving a car that was given to us by her parents, no air conditioning. Here in South Florida, the humidity is very tough for people who are not used to it. And we had the reverse fumes in this vehicle. It was that old. It was just you, you, carbon dioxide, whatever they call that. My wife was pulling up as, for some reason, I was walking out of the house. And my, my daughter, who's 29 years old today, she was about two years old, Priscilla. She was in the back seat. No exaggeration, beyond peach, beyond red. She was just soaking wet in humidity, all this, these fumes, and the biggest smile, because we didn't know any better what the situation was. But I did. I walked out, and I said to myself, I'll never forget, how more or less this, I don't know exact words, how dare you? You said your kids will never struggle like you struggled, but they're struggling even worse. I felt this small, but so brave to take responsibility. I got a friggin' job. I keep a skein. I got my act together. I started waiting on people that I used to go to dinner with, not caring. I surrendered. When you surrender, you don't care about things like that. You put on a smile because you, 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 you're, you're moving forward. Got a sales job. The Better Business Bureau selling businesses, memberships, life started going in, the, in a good way. We eventually got our own apartment. Yes, it was a struggle, a lot of three-day notices. Slowly but surely, I started this business in the finance world. Simultaneously, I still had this addiction of sending away for business opportunities, but I got a package at the same time I was calling a company to sell a membership, and it so happened to be the same company. The guy says, hey, I'll buy this membership I don't believe in under one circumstances. You come and sell for me. You come and do. So that started that. That led to a lot of confidence that someone was giving me a shot. So another Bobby gave me a shot. And I was ready for it mentally. Because six months or a year before that, I would have destroyed the opportunity because I was not mentally ready for it. And things took off in such miracle, massive ways. I started listening because form of communication is listening. And I started understanding the power of sales. And then I started bringing this hospitality behavior, like when I was a waiter and my mom was a waitress, to my customers, giving them more value than I received. One thing led to another. I started my own business, ran into an investment banker at a conference, put my people skills on, the power of thanking you, the power of listening, the power of really sincerely being in the conversation with no motives, only good intentions. It took off, built a business, that $25,000 that you just read about, it was not the 25,000 I had. It was a 25,000 that was in the account already. It was a shell company, a dormant company that had $25,000 in there. We just did the state of Florida corporate filings and the 25,000 became ours. That business took off years later, Someone knocks on the door saying, I'm going to give you $250 million valuation, $75 million I want to buy, I wire into your account, buy 30% of the company. We want to be passive investors. Of course you say yes, because I had no other idea of anything else because I didn't have the information. Then the wire comes in. You say, my gosh, why would someone do that? Are they out of their mind? You go to the powerful google.com, you realize they stole it. Good for them. All along, we were paying attention to this. The market wanted this. We said, you know what? We were distracted. We started fueling this. We took it from 250 million to 600 million in 11 months. Took another 19% off, all cash. Still controlled and owned 51% of the company. Three years later, I exited for a billion dollars. The power of paying attention and the power of people skills and the power of surrendering that you're not the smartest person, you're a disaster, has gotten me to be worth $300 million today. And along the way, I built a $400 million real estate portfolio with no investors, no raising money, one penny at a time, my wife and I. 
That's exactly how we did it. That's a, that's a really impressive story. Um, it's, it's not often, and I think that there's a lot of lessons in, and some of the things that you were speaking about before are, are lessons that people have to take away regardless of where they're at in their career. And I think one of the most important ones is that surrendering piece, that knowing that you're not the smartest person in the room and, and the fact that you, you were able to okay that and admit that because I think that that's really hard for a lot of people to come to terms with. And I think that actually that is one of the greatest inhibitors of success, especially for entrepreneurs. There's, there's many ways that we could sort of dovetail this into a career professional and not taking guidance and mentorship from a boss or a manager or a leader or somebody even outside their organization. Um, but a, an entrepreneur, like, th- I think that that's probably, you know, I've gone into, I've, I've gone into like my own consulting thing before. And, and one of my biggest inhibitions was trying to do everything myself and thinking that I know best. And, and that killed me, like, like physically drained me to the point where like, I, I couldn't do it anymore. Like, you know, I was stressed out, like always tired. Like, so all these different, like negative, like physical things. Um, so how did you, how did you learn that? How did you know that? Because that's not something that comes into, well, maybe for some it does. For me, it didn't come intuitively when I tried to go out on my own. So I'm curious how you came to that conclusion because that's what drove your success. And that's a tough thing you know, to do. Um, failure after failure and us entrepreneurs, we're very durable. We'll continue failing over and over and over. And it'll, there's always an event that happens to us. And on, that event of my daughter in that backseat really changed everything. I used to have an ego. An ego, in my opinion, my world, does not mean you have to be Eric and rude. An ego is Bobby was a control freak. You couldn't tell him nothing. He knew it all. Um, and when I started surrendering, knowing that the only way I'm going to scale, I only know this much. I need to surround myself and get people to compensate all my weaknesses. I, I am a disaster. I am not the smartest knife in the drawer by, no, by, by far. But I knew the importance of people's skills. If I can convince them to come along for the ride, stay along with the ride, and put a model in place that your success is my success. Remember what I just said. Not my success is their success. Your success is my success. I simply got the right people on the bus. They wanted to do business with me. I surrendered by listening to people that knew far more than me, even though they didn't have the drive that I did. But my culture, my DNA got them contagious about creating this organization. Without 600 people, I couldn't be sitting here today. And a lot of entrepreneurs, man, it's me, me, I, I, me, me, I, I. That's an ego. And an ego is not your amigo. And I dumped that many years ago. And I'm so grateful that I did. And I'm so grateful for that day that happened to me with my daughter in that back seat. Now. That, no, that's, I love. <laughs> you got to be ready. You, you have to be ready. It's almost like what they say. And I, and I have a family that has drug issues and all that, you have to be ready for a better life. It's it, simple as that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everything you're saying. So when I, when I even, when I was reading through, like on your website and whatnot, you mentioned, um, uh, obviously leadership first, you just touched on servant leadership, like positive mental attitude, workplace environment, inspiring top level performance, unheard of revenue returns. What is, what is um, outside of just, you know, verbatim positive mental attitude. I've seen you wear that shirt a few times. So what is positive mental attitude from your lens? What does it mean? Because it's more than just a positive mental attitude. I'm assuming it's some sort of like life mantra that you live and you breathe and whatnot. So what is it? It's a very sensitive topic. So if you go back to the day of Pasquale's, my first job, every time I went to Pasquale's, it was so bright, beautiful, the most beautiful day on earth. Sorry, someone's calling here. The most beautiful day on earth. But then when I went home, you remember all that passion, all those personalities I talked about? Beautiful people. Beautiful people. But when I went home, all the misery, all all the furniture being picked up, all the, the fleas, all the stuff that a lot of families are struggling with, it was so negative. I came crashing down so bad to the point where you become depressed. But then when you go to work, you're so positive. I had to really start adapting when I had to go back to, to home. I had to be extremely positive because if not, dude, I was up and down all around. I was growing. This, this momentum yeah. I was building was becoming a big problem. Positive mental attitude means consistency. I am like this all day, every day. This is no exact. I am not a clown on social media 
pretend it here. I don't get paid for this. I don't do, I'm truly doing this out of my heart. I'm in a good spot in life. I know there's Bobbies out there. There's so many Bobbies out there, but they're not willing to surrender. That PMA all day, every day, if you keep it, you stay with it, it will reward you. But you have to be really willing to surrender to say, and I'm a big thing about law of attraction, manifest. I love the book, The Secret. I tell young people, some of them get it. Some of them are not ready to get it. The power of what you attract comes from your attitude. It comes from the way you think and the, the way that, that is what the inbound is. What you're expecting is what you're, it's like a no brainer because I'm so good at it now. But in the beginning it was hard, but I didn't have another Bobby. There was no social media. If I, if I seen another dude like Bobby, I would recognize him. I'll say, for sure, I will listen to him. I'm only giving reminders. This is no strategy. Strategies get when you're, then you hit a level in business, when you're ready to pivot and scale, not pre-pivot, but ready truly to pivot. That's strategies. But right now, I believe the core of any success starts within you, man. It, it's all you. You are the best investment. You got to get your crap right. You have to. A lot of people, I don't care. Bobby, I got $5 million to invest. And I, I'm, I, I love private equity. I invest in entrepreneurs. Remember I said, I invest in entrepreneurs. I don't invest in companies. I understand the importance. I am looking for the other Bobby. I am looking for this duplication. I found a few on social media. I probably maybe put three, $4 million to work already. And the, the power, it all starts with you. I don't care if you have $10 million. You are going to fail, or chances are you will fail if you're mentally not prepared, dude. See, um, I actually, you mentioned the secret and law of attraction and it comes up again and again. And, and it's something that for a long time, I had a lot of trouble wrapping my head around personally. Um, you know, my, my girlfriend is a big proponent of it. She speaks about manifestation, law of attraction for a long time. I was like, oh, that's, you know, that doesn't make any sense. But then I started to understand it more because I'm the kind of person that needs to understand something. So I actually had Joe Vitale on here. If you've watched The Secret, you know him. And I had him on a couple yeah. episodes back. And, and at this point, when I spoke to him, I'd already sort of understood a little bit more about the law of attraction. I tried to put it in very practical terms for people to understand so that they could understand if you're pragmatic or you, you know, you're a little bit unaware of how it works, then like somebody like me who does a little bit more of a due diligence when they try and adopt a new concept that, you know. So the way that I understand it and the way that I, I, it makes sense to me, and I want to always speak about this when we speak about law of attraction, is when you think about something that you want and you always think about it and you're always saying that you're going to get it, every single action you take during your day is going to be, is going to be focused on that thing, even subconsciously. So it's not magic. It's not just happenstance. It's not you know, higher level beings just magically saying, you asked for it, here it is. It's you always opening up your mind. Like you said, you're open to receive. And it's you always taking these small little actions, small little steps, focus on the right thing because you know that you can do it. And you're not going to take those steps if you don't think you can do it. Because why would you? That's insanity. If you don't think you can do something, why would you take an action towards it? But if you believe that you can actually do something, everything you do, as crazy as it is, you'll do it because you're like, you know what? I think I can get there. And that's, you know, that's, that's the best way I've always found it described. And that makes sense to me. I don't know if there's a better way to describe it. That you, you, said it you, you said it beyond perfectly, beyond perfectly. And what you just explained, you outlined if people at least try it, it's boring. It's like at times you'll question yourself. I mean, what is this? Is this a freaking cult? Is this a religion? What, am, what have they got me doing here? You will become very productive, very efficient, because it's all about what you're manifesting. You said it perfectly. I've been on a lot of podcasts. You said it better than I can say it. And, no, no, man, not at all, not at you all. You know, it's it, it just awesome. And, and it works for me. And I can't, you know, a lot of people that have tremendous success. I belong to an organization. It's about 800 members. The global personal net worth is over 80 billion. These people are far more successful than me. And guess what, man? I'm hearing the same stories over and over from beautiful people. When I say beautiful, global success, beyond financial rewards. They feel really good. Can you imagine being financially free and feeling good? Not because of the money. You just have this, this Hawaiian wave to you, man, that you're just, you're riding it. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 my, it's not money makes you, money doesn't make you happy. Money just gives you opportunity. That's right. Now Resources. you can choose to whatever you want. And if you, if you have the opportunity, you can make the decisions to make you happy, right? You can yeah, go on vacation whenever you want. You can live wherever you want. You can send your kids to whatever school you want. 
Those are options and opportunities. Money is just a facilitator. So I think that that's where people, you know, money's not, I always, I, I hate when people are money is evil, money is, no, it's not. Money is, money is a tool. Money is a, money is a transaction. Yeah. That's all it is. So, you know, it's, it's very easy to get more. <laughs> if, you, if you don't already have it, you just got to open up yourself to trying new things. Um, I think the, the barrier to entry for, you know, you spoke about social media, about putting yourself out there, about side hustles. Like, it's very easy to make extra money. I know people that now make like six figures plus easily on Fiverr and, and all these things doing like freelance work. And that just started as, okay, I have a couple extra hours on the weekend. And then, you know, you do anything for five or 10 years, you're going to see some results if you Absolutely. keep it up for five or 10 years. And that's a fraction of your life. Imagine Absolutely. just, put, you know, every, every, every business that I've seen successful, you, you, you see all these like small little family owned businesses. And now like, you know, they're all driving the Porsches and the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis. They all have the $5 million home. They just hustled for 10 years. They didn't have business. You know, they didn't have, they didn't have a crazy business strategy. They didn't have all these resources. They probably started, they're probably, you know, not living in the best, uh, most beautiful house when they started the townhome, yep. condo, apartment, whatever. And they just hustled. And then you did that for 10 years. And after 10 years, you'll, you're going to get somewhere. You're going to, there's right. no way you aren't, you know? So, power is, you know, the power of small wins, the compound yeah. effect is scary. I like to use 120 months because young people don't like to hear 10 years. So just 120 months, it's, it's like around the block. It's not that long. No. No, and now, and now even 10 years is a long time for somebody who puts in the effort. Like if, you know, I, I think that 10 years, I think you can, I think you can, I don't say fast track, but you can get some, I've been doing this, okay, I've been doing this podcast. I don't even want to talk about me that much, but I'm just, it's all, it's all sort of like, I draw on my own personal examples. I've been doing this podcast for about a year and a half and I've had, uh, I've had yourself, I've had uh, Guy Kawasaki, Anthony Scaramucci, Joe Vitale, Jack Canfield, Grant Cardone. I have about 10,000 downloads per podcast. That's been about a year and a bit of me just wow. figuring out how to podcast. So that's it. Yeah, maybe I took a couple extra you know, hours on the weekend to learn how to set up yeah. a camera or to do this or that or whatever. But it's like, I'm not a podcast expert. Like I've never done this before. I just, just didn't stop. I think that's the attitude that you, know, you took with your, with your businesses. You just didn't stop. Yeah. And then you found success. Eventually, it, it wasn't like you did it in the, like, well, actually, when you scaled, it was pretty quick. But the first, the first part of your life was, was, was tough. And then once you started to figure out and once you started to make money, you realize now yes. it's not so hard, right? So I love And, and that's where the non-refundable minutes came into play. Yeah, yeah. I, Let's talk you know, about I look, that. I want to know that. You know, I, I, I look back so many years, because I'm 53. So I look back so many years, did I burn? and invest my non-refundable minutes the wrong way. I'm, I, 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 it's like, oh my gosh, I can never get them back. That's why I tell young people, if you can just pick up on this earlier instead of later, you know, forget about whatever my net worth is. It probably could have been 100 times more. If, but that's the power of social media. That's the power of good people with good hearts by blowing up their heart to people with good intentions, no motives. I don't want no money from nobody, man. I don't get investors. I don't sell packages. I'm just this whack dude that's saying, Bobby, you could do this, man. You're all over the place. You could do this. You're burning your non-refundable minutes. You're never going to get them back. So what? So the concept of non-refundable minutes, it's just as simple as it sounds. It's just, if you, is, is there anything else outside of like, just like the fact that if you, if you waste your time, that's it, it's gone? Is there any other like, you know, ways to, Optimize it, or max. It, 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 I mean, there is a there's a little sauce to it, and pretty much uh, you, anybody can see it, including a, a second grader. If you really invest your non-refundable minutes, you have 24 hours. Imagine getting three days out of one day, but not work. I'm not talking about working all 24 hours, and people think, "Oh my God, you're just going to be exhausted." No, no, you're not being efficient. You're not being productive. That is the power of non-refundable minutes. So your, your minute's worth maybe 10 cents today. Imagine it one day worth $70 or the Walmart family worth $70,000 a minute. Every minute that goes by, the Walmart family makes $70,000. Imagine the compound effect of paying attention to your non-refundable minutes. Well, Bobby, it's not all about money. I agree, but money allows you resources. I am one that gives back. I, I, I love helping people especially don't have they have very limited resources we are so fortunate we have so many resources it's so easy to, to be successful in america 
Well, that's easy for you, Bobby. No, no, no. If you're prepared, there's a stay in. I didn't make it up. When preparation meets opportunity, magic happens. That's why it goes back to being self-improved. You've got to be prepared for opportunities. And the reason you're not seeing it, Bobby Castro's, you're not prepared. They're, they're everywhere. I see them all over. So I How do don't know you, that answers the question, but. Well, it's, no, it, it, it does. And I'm, I'm going to ask one more piece and then I'm going to speak about something you just mentioned about, um, about seeing opportunity. But how do you get those three, three days in one day? What, what do you, so when you say that, what does that mean? So number one, I take care of myself. I, I, I like to eat right. I like to work out correctly. I'm 53. I feel like I'm truly 25 years old. I want to live a very long life to get as much out of life as I view life as a value add. It has no ceiling. Every time you give life, your life value, you increase in value. Valuation, sorry. Um, someone's, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, I'm getting, uh, you know, I never was good on technology and all that. Now I have to say the last few months, I'm getting pretty good. I'm even using my smartphone for everything. Well, now so that everyone's working from home. valuation <laughs> tremendously. And so when, you, when you're, you're, you're sold on this, and the only reason I'm sold on this, I get results from it. So I want more results. And you become so passionate about your minute that no one's going to steal my minute. Right now, I'm sharing my heart with you. So I want to give you more value you more value your listeners more than me why do you want to do that bobby why do you want to drain yourself somehow some way there's a huge return down the road that's how bobby castro was able to take advantage of opportunities because one day hey you don't the opportunities i've been exposed to just being kind to people one day they come up to you i've done so i have i had so many businesses truly Massive net income. I mean, one income, $180 million net income. This is no adding back depreciation, other ones millions. From, from not being focused on what's in it for me, but just w down the road, it comes back to you. And that's where I get more minutes out of my day. And I see so many people not respecting their, their minutes. And it's almost the same thing, not respecting your penny. And it's the same type of behavior. And you're never going to ever compound a penny until you respect the penny you're never going to compound a minute until you respect your minute if you're with your wife at dinner or being married 30 years you, you got to be in this thing you got to invest these minutes not burn them not argue with it not build this momentum this craziness if you're in a meeting in your corporation not burning three hours of wasted energy bashing people and doing all that stuff or so I, I get to the extreme about my minutes. I, I want to make sure I get maximum value in dollars for my minutes. My minutes, I have to make money with them. And money is not so much economics. It's a return on how I'm impacting and not worrying about what's in it for me today. Life has showed me it shows up in bigger ways. I, I, I know that in my heart. I've been fi I'm financially free because of it. I feel good who I am. I, I know I have integrity, character. I learned the hard way of not fast-tracking, tricking customers, tricking your employees, uh, telling your family members this, and it's really not that. Wasted energy. Yeah, and it doesn't, and, and you know, I've always found that the, the way that seems the easiest ends up being by far the hardest in the long run. And, and, oh, disaster, costs you more. Yeah. If, if you're a hamster on a wheel and you think you're rocking and rolling, and all you're doing is this. Yeah. Now, okay, so how do you open up, how do you open up, and I, I, do, you have a, do you have a hard stop at any point? Because I'm just- Yeah, I got, a, I got a, yeah, a few minutes, and, and what I do in the morning, I, and, I, and again, I get off topic, I get all radical. I get up about five in the morning, Yeah. Um, every morning. I work on myself, literally, two hours. I am so humble that I know I'm exposed to depression, negativity, it's swimming around us. Open your TV, listen to this person, look at what's all going on in the world today. That goes into your subconscious mind, and you act upon this stuff without you thinking. You could be the Mac Daddy person. Oh, not me. Okay, you're the smartest person. You're not vulnerable. You're just, you know, indestructible. I am very vulnerable to all that. I work on myself. What are my core values? I stick to my core values. I do not get distracted. I literally spend two hours a day. A lot of people claim they do, but this is a beautiful thing about it. When we spend time alone, you never lie to yourself. When people are around, there's like, ah, blah, blah, blah. But when we're by ourselves taking that warm shower and with all those thoughts, you're never lying to yourself. You're never lying to yourself. Stay, stay there in that core. 
it's all the magic right there where you're thinking with all those thoughts and all those things you're thinking about either doing or not doing all those problems stay there stay there but when you leave the shower boom you're distracted yeah, no, I, I, uh, I think that the, the fact that you take time out of your day to do that's important because not enough people even do that. Um, and when you don't, again, when you don't time block, when you don't, again, respect the minute, you're not going to, you're not going to take advantage. So actually, you know, I, I, I have a ton of, you know, this is a really good chat. I appreciate it a lot. Um, and there's a lot of things that I think that I could ask about and talk about. I want to speak about like opening up your mind to opportunity and whatnot, but I do, also don't want to drag this on forever. So I want to, I want to close up with just a couple questions that I always like to ask. Um, and then maybe, maybe in the future, you know, fingers count, crossed, count one on thing, let's do on another it. one. Nope. And there's a lot of stuff here. Um, so one thing I like to ask is, uh, one life lesson just like very, very quick one life lesson that you've learned over your life that you could say would be applicable to anyone in any situation that they should focus on right now. So then like a very prominent life lesson, even though there's a ton of them, but what would be the one thing you would tell your younger self? My younger self, Bobby, be patient. And when I say be patient, I'm all about urgent massive action. That's another thing I'm all about, but there's the, you, you, you do not fall victim of the easy route. I was addicted to the easy route. Please don't do that. Understand it is boring, slow, it smells so old that it looks like it's a too old. You're gonna have to be there for a moment in time. And I always, when I'm talking on social media, I'm talking to how I used to be, because I know there's other people out there that, that are like that, they may not wanna surrender to admit it. We, we all want it faster. No, 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 that's not enough. I need the, I need the needle now. Don't. Don't be slow. Yeah, like a horse. Just hold that bridle, but just do not ignore the power of information. I'm not talking about getting a degree. That's a sensitive topic to me. I don't think schools are delivering value. What I'm talking about is knowledge. Be stupid. Be vulnerable. Get on Google. It's the most powerful source. Get know yourself more. What is your core value, Bobby? What and a lot of people. A lot of successful people say, do what you love. Based on my experience, no. I choose to fall in love with the process, the journey to become financially free so I can do what I love later on. Fall in love with the process of creating a better life. I could not be worth $300 million boating every day. I love boating. I, I do boating now. So that's, I don't know, you know, I'm hoping I'm not offending anybody, but that's just, I'm talking to another Bobby. I love music, but. No, you're not offending. Um, a, a really great quote. I, I asked a uh, guy Kawasaki the same question. He said, you know, you fall in love with what you're doing real quick when you're making a lot of money doing it. So sometimes you have to open up your mind. You have to, curiosity is so important. Um, but that's a, that's a great point too. And I think you have to be, you have to be passionate, but you have to be honest. And I think if you're not honest, then you're just spinning your wheels. Like you mentioned. Um, Another thing, uh, and, then, uh, and then I'll just get some, some uh, socials from you so I know where to send people to go find more. But uh, the last question I have is um, a book or a mentor or some resource that you would recommend outside of yourself and the stuff that you put on social, where do you go to learn? There's somebody I spent some time with, um, an amazing week with, had some one-on-ones with him. What a beautiful person. He's somebody that I admire a lot. Uh, his name is Richard Branson. Um, he's a beautiful soul. He, yeah, he's worth a few billion. He probably could be worth easily 40 billion, but he's not because he gives out his heart and he's really helping a lot of people around the world. When I say around the world, it's every one of us. Uh, Richard Branson is somebody I think a lot of people should read about. It just shows you how you too can create success within yourself, but more so have more of a joyous global success in your life. Um, the book, The Secret, a lot of people, I, I keep, they ask, I get a lot of DMs and I, I respond to every one of them. Oh, Bobby, I already read it. And I tell them, Bobby, please read it again. You got to read it when you're ready to read it. You have to be ready to read it. You can't pick up a book, think you're going to get value from it. If you're not ready to, to understand, you're reading about how to improve yourself. What is your weaknesses? What are you doing wrong, Bobby? You're a freaking mess. Well, you, what are you doing by? I'm not on drugs. I don't do nothing. I don't rob people. 
You're a mess. The re you're a mess. So the secret, if you read it, please read it again. I have read that book over and over. And every time I read it, I get value from it. Look into Richard Branson. He has some great messages, an amazing story. If he did it, anybody can do it. This guy was a mess in his life. That's a good, that's, a, that's, you know, everyone knows Richard Branson, but I don't think a lot of people research or, or understand his story. I think he's just like uh, some ominous figure that, that's worth a lot of yeah, money. And they're on social media and they're just scrolling, seeing the fancy pictures. Yeah. You know, if, if you want to learn more, man, this Google is so powerful, man. You don't have to pay nobody for Google. Yeah, that's a good, it's, that's probably the best advice that anyone's ever given on this show. Just, just do some damn research and, uh, and, and use the resources that are free. That's all you got to do. Um, okay, where do people go to find more Bobby Castro? Uh, well, my son email. created the Instagram account. It's official Bobby Castro. Okay. Um, and then I have a Facebook. Um, he does all that. Um, and again, guys, you know, uh, I'm not doing nothing or expecting anything out of this. I'm doing it from my heart. These are reminders I'm given that you already know. You're just not applying them. And if somebody like myself, you know, this is, this is how I did it. I can't really talk about how others, we all have our stories, but I am an individual, was not at school. I moved very fast. I just was in a meeting right before this podcast with my controller. She had to explain it. Simple things that probably you'll get, anybody get, but for me, had to explain it 10 times over and over and I still didn't get it. So now I got to get back on the <laughs> Zoom with her to, so, you know, Instagram and all that, man, just be kind to people. Don't invest your minutes being angry and all this drama and all this stuff that's draining you. You're, you're, you are missing, man. You are cheating and discounting your life. Like if you, it's like, you are expecting to wake up. You will bet a million dollars you're going to wake up tomorrow. That's how people are so distracted. Yeah. And by the way, I want to put on the record while we're recording, bobbycastro.com. That's all for today. Thanks again for joining me on another episode of the Success Story Podcast. You can download or stream this podcast wherever podcasts are available, including iTunes, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and many others. You can also watch this podcast on YouTube. If you haven't already, please subscribe and share this podcast with your friends, family, coworkers, and peers. Please leave us a rating on iTunes. It takes about 30 seconds as it allows other people to find our podcast and lets our amazing guests reach even more people with their message. And remember, any rating is fine as long as it contains five stars. I'm Scott Clary from the Success Story Podcast, signing off.